Hey everyone, this is Mike from Night Chat, and today doing a quick breakdown of a video we did a couple months ago on having Star Wars in AR and VR. And you'll see a little screenshot right here, and I'll also play a clip right now. So as you just saw in that clip, we're combining a person playing an AR kit and a person playing in an HTC Vive, could be a Rift, whatever you want it to be. And we're doing that through a, a network simulation that's just running real time, sending the data back and forth between the users. And huge shout out to a couple of people who left a few comments on asking for specific questions on this. So hopefully this gets through and answers as, as much as possible from those. So first I wanted to talk about kind of how, how that was built at a high level and a large part of it was the Unity Asset Store. So these are just some of the few assets we actually used to build that project. You'll probably recognize volumetric lines is the, the actual lightsaber blade. You have post-processing, which is huge in like just making anything actually pop and a couple particle packs to get some nice explosions and some little, little kink effects off of the, the sword when anything actually hits. So if you're if you're planning to like build something in a kind of hackathony project like this was, we literally did this in probably three days. Then recommend getting as much as you can off of the asset store, and you can still make something that looks pretty realistic and awesome. So I also when I whenever I talk about assets, I gotta say that I have to do huge props towards Stone Fox and VRTK. They're an amazing community, and if you don't know about them, definitely go check out their Slack and Twitter and all of that good stuff. And yeah, this is also great for bootstrapping stuff. We didn't actually use it in this project, but you, you can realistically pretty much use it to, to really get yourself most of the way there. And then last one thing I wanted to mention was Photon, which is what we use for networking. And I wanted to take some time here to kind of explain a little bit about how networking works. So at a high level, what we have is the Photon SDK and Photon provides you with a bunch of cloud services that is really, really helpful. And one of the packages, which is free by the way, is you can use up to 20 concurrent users within your app or game. So what, what, is that, what does a concurrent user mean? So basically, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is draw here and here. So this is the PC side and this is your, I, I don't know, AR side or AR, kit, AR core, whatever, whatever you want to have it. This photon here right here is represented by their cloud and both your AR and PC talk to photon and then it sends data back to it. So at a high level, this is how it's working. And this is obviously not the fastest way. Obviously, the fastest way would be for the phone and the PC to talk with each other. But uh, at the same time, it allows for having a central authority that really helps with you with actually syncing the data. So at a high level, what's actually happening here is our phone is recording its positional data from like whenever it moves around and it sends that to Photon which then it registers that if there were multiple devices here, it would then actually go ahead and then send that to whoever is listening. In this case, it was just the Vive, but if you have multiple PCs or phones, whatever you wanna have, it would work for that as well. Same thing on the PC side, it's watching where my hand is moving and how the lightsaber is moving. It sends that data to Photon, which then sends it down to AR. Now we're using Photon because it's per um, personally my favorite uh, actual networking stack to use within Unity, but you, the same logic really applies to Unit. It applies to really any networking stack where you're trying to do a client server type of architecture. So that's what's going on here. Now I wanted to break down a little bit of this code for you guys. Specifically, this is done in Photon and this was pretty much just our way of syncing our avatars across the uh, across the network. So I'm going to break this down. It's about <laughs> it's a pretty long actual script, but a lot of this is kind of duplicated code that you need because you're syncing the head, the hand, and the hands. This is basically all of the variables that we <laughs> we are defining here, and you can kind of take a look. So we have references to our head, left hand, right hand as game objects, so we can get the transforms out of that. We have some synchronization here, and this is primarily for interpolation. And what interpolation is, it allows us to smooth our data across the, the actual time that we get the data. So for example, if I get 
my data here at zero seconds and I get a data packet at one second, I need to fill in the gap between zero and one. And so to do that, I will average out my data. And that that is what's high level is known as interpolation. So we need a couple of variables to keep track of that. The rest down here are kind of more also for interpolation, but they allow us to, to keep track of where we currently are and where we last left off. So again, a lot of interpolation code here because that's what really gets you a nice smooth feel out of your, your actual simulation. Here we have our RPC calls and any setup code. So most of this at the top here, this is all set up. And you have two methods here, one for actually syncing the, the lightsaber popping up. So if you look at the beginning of that Star Wars clip, then you'll see that the, the lightsaber pops up and that we have to actually sync that across the network. So both this and this method actually handle that. Next, we have the, the flashing of the sword. What that really means is whenever our actual sword got hit, we want to, to basically play a little particle effect, which you can see down here at the bottom. And that particle effect is just like a little tink off of our sword whenever like a light, uh, light laser hits us. And so we just have it tink and then the, the flash appears on both sides. So that's pretty much here. Pretty straightforward. And that's one of the reasons why I really like our, our photon, <laughs> photon stack. Really, all you have to do is define that something is a photon RPC method. What an RPC method is, it's a remote procedural call. And that just means that it's going to sync whatever this method is across the whole network. And then you just have to call it from whoever is issuing the command. So in this case, whoever calls flash sword will send an RPC. You set, set the name, who, you, who it goes to, and just any extra data that you want. And that, that's it. So pretty, pretty straightforward. And what, again, one of the reasons why I really like using Photon to, to simplify kind of the whole networking process here. Now, this page is our giant, giant networking syncing. So here at the top, we have pretty much the, the whole interpolation that's actually happening. This gets called from update. So it's happening every frame. And basically all we're doing here, if you take a look at the actual code is doing a lerp, which is interpolation and slurp, which is interpolation for rotation, spherical linear interpolation. And so that gets called every frame. And it's basically saying when I receive a packet, update the, the position. Uh, and when I haven't received a packet, basically go through and average and smooth out the motion of where if my, if it's my sword that moves or if it's the drone that actually moves. So that's what that method at the top is doing. And again, a lot of it's kind of duplicated code for various different parts, but it has the same principle, which kind of bloats it up. So then you have the serialized view. So serialized view is called whenever Photon wants to either read or write from your your network stack. So what, what that means is uh, if you're writing, that means you're, you want to send data out to everyone. If you're reading, that means you want to go ahead and accept data so that you can update your own reference. So right here, what we have is the writing command, and that's fairly short. All we're doing is just sending our position, which is the vectors in this case. So these top ones here are vectors, and the bottom ones here are quaternions, which is for rotations. So that's all we need to send. And then at the bottom is the reading side. And what that does is it has to update all those variables that we saw here. All of these interpolation variables need to get updated here so that we have a proper sync of the actual interpolation. So high level, that is what's going on here. If you want to compare, yeah, you can see that pretty much all of these different variables are handling that interpolation and setting whatever sync needs to happen. So that does it for that code. I mean, there's, yes, a lot of code here. And you can see that as I go further down the list, it definitely gets a lot longer. But at a high level, a lot of this is duplicated so that we can handle various different things. Now, could this be actually simplified and kind of <laughs> decoupled in a lot of ways? Yes. And at the same time, I also want to mention that this was very much a hackathon -y project done over the course of uh, three days. So. Yeah, there's, there's a reason why a lot of this is kind of hacky, but one of the nice things about hacky code is sometimes it just kind of makes sense because you're, you're copying a lot, pasting a lot of things, so you kind of avoid that convolution. 
And uh, yeah, that's kind of the networking stack. Hopefully that kind of helps uh, answer some of the questions about what we were using, how this data was actually synced, and trying to be a super transparent with you guys, why, but also not like overloading you with a bunch of code that, <laughs> that, that is actually involved in creating something like an AR VR syncing. So hopefully this is helpful. Again, if there are any more questions, definitely leave them in the comments below and we'll get to them as soon as we can. And if you like this type of video, make sure to smash that like button because that helps us out. And also subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.